The world's racing media descended on Newmarket on Thursday to see the party of international raiders set to do battle in the Group 1 sprints at Royal Ascot next week. No surprise, all eyes were on Australian wonder mare Black Caviar, who cantered up the Alba Hatchery polytrack. Everything's gone really well so far. We've been here a week. It's all been, um, it's probably been boring, if anything, for her. It's all been very simple. We haven't had any issues. She's in good shape. Um, we've got another week now to, to gear her up and have her ready to go for Saturday week. Well, she's done very little up to now. We had her rock hard fit to get on the plane and come here. She was been racing. She'd had three gallops in the fortnight before she left. She was very fit. So she was able to have a week, very quiet week here to recover from the flight. The next step is up to Peter to assess Peter and Tony to assess what she uh, needs in regards to a gallop, if at all. It's very hard to get um, opposition for her at home because we do come out early and say what races we're going to target, and, and that way the other good horses that because we we've got so many carnivals at the same time they can pick and choose where they want to go, and most of the time they've gone away from her. Um, it does seem a little bit like that. I had three trainers talk earlier today that they'd prefer to, to dodge her and it's made for a, a great king stand if anything I think it's a, <laughs> if that was in Melbourne it would be the race of the week it, it looks a, a top race uh, opposition can be hard to get one horse hoping to step out from black caviar's shadow at the royal meeting is compatriot Hortensia trained by Paul Massara who sent out Alberta to finish third in a July cup two years ago uh, she arrived about a week after the Dubai race, so around six or seven weeks ago. Uh, I arrived three weeks ago, so we've been here uh, a couple of weeks with the mare. She settled in great and um, uh, yeah, really happy with her going into the race. I came last two years ago with another horse and, and uh, she travelled very poorly and took quite a while to settle in. So this time I was keen to get here as early as I could and uh, have the mare settle in. She's an older mare, she, rather than a gelding or a colt, and uh, that can be a little bit more fragile. Uh, than, the, than the other sex, so uh, we thought we'd get here early, settle her in, get her used to the environment, and uh, hopefully she'll do her best under those circumstances. And you're pretty happy with the, with the progress that Hortensia's made since she's been here? Yeah, oh, she's done really well. Uh, if we had a bit more warm weather, we'd be, we'd be happier, but um, as long as we get a firm track, uh, or decent track, I should say, on, uh, on Tuesday, it should be hard to beat. Her form's always been a, of a high standard, but this year it seemed to have been taken to an all-new level. Yeah, absolutely. Winning form is good, good form, and she's won the last three, including two Group Ones, uh, in two different countries. So uh, it'll be a fair effort to come here and win, uh, win another Group One. There'll be three different countries, three Group Ones on the trot. So it'll be quite difficult, but uh, we're here to compete. And what about the, the race in Dubai? The horses that finished in behind her, the likes of Soul Power, reopposing. Would you be confident of, of uh, confirming that form? I think so, definitely. I think Soul Power is probably a good line. I think he ran well the other day. He's probably unlucky, uh, but he seems to be a bit of an unlucky horse uh, to get beaten by bait of breath. Uh, but uh, through that line, I think, uh, I think obviously we're going to stand up, the form will stand up. That race was over five furlongs, but generally her better form is over six furlongs. Yeah. Is it just because Black Caviar is in the race that you're not going for the, the Diamond Jubilee? Uh, it's certainly a major reason. Uh, but uh, at this stage, I think a stiff five uh, suits her. Uh, the way that we're training her at the moment, uh, I think if the, it's an ideal type, type of race for her. I'd probably still be running in this race, even if Black Caviar wasn't there, but I'd, I'd definitely be running in both uh, the uh, Kingstand and the Jubilee if Black Caviar wasn't around. And the Aussies do have a, a brilliant record in the Kingstand. Do you think she's sort of of the same calibre as the likes of Scenic Blast and, and Take Over Target? I think definitely. I think she can definitely feature in that category. And um, and uh, she's a horse that's kind of in a real purple patch. She's on, she's uh, probably her best career run was the last start. and. Uh, as I said, the form is very good, so I think she'll be really competitive and hard to beat. Would you say she has a, a better chance than Alberta when you brought her over a few years back? Yeah, yeah, no doubt, uh, particularly in this race. Uh, she's obviously settled in, travelled better, coming off a couple of very good wins, and um, I think the way the race will pan out, it'll suit her as long as the ground's, ground's fair. And just a word on the ground, if it did turn up really soft, would, would that make you rethink about running her? Well, we definitely run her, but I think our chances would, would diminish greatly. Um, she definitely wants firm ground to be able to really accelerate the way that she can, and uh, yielding ground would be would take away a fair amount from her sprint. Reopposing Hortensia is Alcor's sprint third, Joy and Fun, who returns to Ascot two years after finishing 13th to Star Spangled Banner in the Golden Jubilee. Um, he's definitely feeling very well, but um, two years ago he had a 
very bad fracture in the race uh, where he uh, cracked the cannon bone. Um, uh, we had, uh, had to do surgery in it and uh, he recovered very well, yeah. He's been over here now about uh, two weeks now, settled in properly. He's eating well, he's enjoying himself. Um, I'm very happy at the condition he's in now. He has the farm coming into this country. Um, he didn't really finish that race two years ago. Um, I hope he can at least finish the race and I think he can run well. Is, is that the reason why you're dropping him down to, to five furlongs rather than taking on the six furlong race or is it because of Black Caviar being in the, in the Diamond Jubilee? Well, it's two ways of thinking. One is Black Caviar. Um, the other is um, he's running well in the five furlong. Whereas your five furlong, he's a little bit of a climb, you know, going uphill. So uh, I reckon um, my horse, if he runs in the 1200, he can win in the 1200. I think the, the, the 1000 meters will, will just be right for him at this stage, you know. And what did you make of his, his last run in Dubai? Well, actually, it's very unfortunate he missed the start just by a fraction, and, uh, and the jockey Brad Doll had to work pretty hard and then pushing him, trying to get a position, and, and going through in the fence where it wasn't a very good place to be at the time, you know, but uh, he still managed to finish third there, so, uh, you know, that was quite a nice run for him then, you know. So I'm hoping he will, you know, just bring the form over here, yeah. W would you be pretty hopeful of turning the form around with Ortensia? Well, Tenzi had the, the perfect um, ground and the perfect position where he was in. If I had a choice, I would like him to be out there too, actually. But um, we saved a lot of ground from the inside, but uh, he was a bit off the brighter the last 100 meters. So um, he was lucky he hang on for third, actually. Yeah. And the sun's shining at the moment, but it's been pretty wet in the UK lately. Would soft ground be a concern for, for your horse? Yes, it would be, um, but we just heard what's uh, happening with the, wet, with the weather this next weekend, uh, next week. So um, it looks pretty bright. Um, um, we are trying to ride him in the right ground to suit the horse, you know, yeah, with the jockey on him, yeah. And looking longer term, do you think he may stay for the July Cup? Well, actually, it all depends on, on the, what he's do, uh, doing Tuesday. Um, then I'll make a decision and uh, we'll see where we go from there. Well, Danny, first time out of Hong Kong for uh, Little Bridge. How's he taken the journey? Uh, it's a bit hard for him, you know. He need to take 20 hours flight because of four hours delay uh, to come here. Totally different place, uh, but uh, he get used to it very fast. It acclimatize it's okay, yeah. And must be change of weather conditions, I'd imagine, for him. Oh, you know, Hong Kong is very hot, but here, uh, people. I know it's a summer in England, but still. Yesterday, I, it's five degrees in the morning, so it's quite, quite cold actually. Uh, uh, for me, ideally, it's a good, good track because he, he can handle good track for absolutely. But unfortunately, people told me uh, it will be rain on tomorrow, so I do the best. Let God do the rest. Is, is there a chance he wouldn't run if it was soft ground? Uh, no, we, we, because we just aim on this race. So even what kind of ground, we, we run him for definitely. Yeah. And he runs in the, the five furlong race. Last time out, he won over uh, over six furlongs. Are you going for the five furlong race because you think that will suit him more or to avoid black caviar? Uh, I, I think definitely uh, black caviar is uh, the top filly in the world. He's a top spinner in the world as well. But I, I, I think my horse, Little Beach, run 1,000 meter at this moment is more suitable for him. Not everyone is scared of taking on the wonder from down under though, and the opposition to Black Caviar in Saturday's Diamond Jubilee Stakes is headed by the Exomark Prescott trained Krypton Factor. He settled in uh, very well, to be honest. Uh, he probably knows he's, he's home. Um, the atmosphere around the stables and Gerard Butler's yard is quite you know, quiet and took it in very well. He came over on the um, 26th of, um, of May was after the race in Singapore um, and uh, it took him no time to, to sell them. And he had quite a bad trip to Singapore, what happened? Well he did, I think it was the, um, the first time that he, he, he flew for uh, the last two years, he was based in Dubai and um, it took him three or four days to settle in and get back into his feet. The atmosphere is very different in Singapore and the weather was very humid of course. Um, but luckily we didn't go through that here. He had the first quiet week, but um, he's had two works into him now. 
the last one was yesterday on the Bradley Mile. Uh, we were happy with the way he worked. And he's shown enormous improvement in the last couple of seasons. What would you put that down to? Um, <clears throat> he's had a, a nice break between um, um, three and four over the summer in Dubai. And I think that made the big difference, allowing him to uh, uh, mature and physically, physically just change after that break. He was much stronger and bigger, basically. His best runs have been on Tapita. Do you think he can replicate that level of form on the turf? There's no reason not to. I mean, he had, um, although not at this level, but he had some uh, good races as a two-year-old on the turf. Um, as long as it's not soft ground, I think he'd cope with it. In his run in Singapore, would you put put that down to the travelling or, or the ground? I think it was a bit of both, to be honest. It was uh, the ground. He definitely didn't enjoy himself. Um, it was pretty soft, and uh, part of it was the fact that he travelled. He didn't travel well, I think. And if it did end up soft at Ascot, is there a chance he might not run? Definitely, yeah. There's a big chance we don't run. It's soft. And Kieran Fan keeps the ride. Yes, he keeps it right. <clears throat> yeah, he rode him in all his races for the last two years. So, uh, um, you know, if anybody knows him, it will be Kieran. And of course, up against you in the, the Diamond Jubilee is a certain black caviar. Yes, we um, keep reminded that, you know, we're running for second place here. But, I mean, it's a race, isn't it? And honestly, do you believe that, that this is the horse to beat her? Uh, that's a tough question. <clears throat> I mean, she's a winner of 21 races out of 21, so uh, I don't think she's easy for anyone to beat. Um, but as we all know, you know, everything's possible in horse racing, and that's why we're there.